Hello and welcome. My name is Meeplus, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today I'm looking back at the last three months of 2021 to do my fourth quarter not comics wrap up. This year is the first time I did not comics wrap ups every quarter, and I suspect it helped me keep on track for my yearly goals. And it's nice to talk a bit about the not comics that I read. Overview is. First, I'll give a rundown of what books I read this past quarter, including why I picked them up and how I rated them with a few opinions mixed in. Then I'll do a brief 2021 goals wrap up followed by statistics, comparing what happened this past quarter to my overall statistics, because I find it interesting, but don't feel like making two separate videos. If only some of that is interesting to you, I will be providing timestamps, something I finally took a minute to figure out this past year, much simpler than I expected. Another pretty good quarter when it came to books I ended up rating pretty highly. This did lead me to the somewhat cliche internal angst of wondering if I'm not being harsh enough on the books or wondering if I'm being too harsh on the books that I did end up rating the lowest. Who knows? Starting at my three star baseline, let's kick things off with The Centaur's Wife by Amanda LaDuc. I rushed to pick up this book because I finished Disfigured on Fairy Tales, Disability, and Making Space in the third quarter of 2021. Going in that order, I think that LaDuc did a lot of interesting things with The Centaur's Wife when it came to disability representation. That said, it did feel severely underdeveloped in some other ways and perhaps needed to go under a few more drafts. Some of the racial implications and relationships with land and place felt very off. My next three star reads were Speak No Evil by Uzo Dinma Iwala. I obviously picked up this book as part of my main reading goal for 2021. It was an interesting look at queerness in the Nigerian diaspora. Then we have Behold the Dreamers by Imbolo Mbui, another goal read and a literary fiction title that pulls you into a story about immigration to so-called America right at the point of the 2008 financial collapse. I would be interested in reading more fiction about this time period. Moving along to four stars, we have Real Queer America, LGBT Stories from Red States by Samantha Allen, a pretty random pickup, everything about this book proved to be extremely interesting and really sucked me in. If you have any interest in rural queerness in so-called America, I would recommend this book. Plus, there's some interesting reflection on how to create diverse queer community. Next, I read Islamic Poetry, Volume 1, The Mystics by Various. Not necessarily a written down and outlined goal, but I have felt a desire to read more poetry and more books by Muslims. This checked both those boxes and was very interesting. The book studies at my church all heavily skew towards classic Christian mystics, so it was intriguing to compare and contrast two similar takes on different religions. Then I read You Can't Be Neutral on a Moving Train, A Personal History by Howard Zinn. This book had been on my TBR for some time, probably ever since I was first introduced to Howard Zinn back in 2016. As soon as I saw my library had an e-audiobook copy, I knew I had to pick it up and was not disappointed. This was followed by two books that I felt could have almost been five stars for me, except they both leaned into some pretty nasty stereotypes when it came to people using meth particularly the kind of threat they pose to other characters. Otherwise, I do feel like Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bolle and Sugar Town Queens by Mala Nunn have a lot to recommend them. Obviously, I picked up the former because it was pretty popular among booktubers I follow, and I'm always looking to pick up more books by indigenous authors, in this case, Chippewa. Sugar Queens has popped up less often in my YouTube feed, but Ashley of Bookshrell mentioned it in one of her wrap-ups, and it sounded really unique and interesting, and obviously, dovetailed with my main reading goal of 2021. I also ended up rating The Blood of Flowers by Anita Amira Zavani, four out of five stars. One of the most erotic books I read this year. I feel like this was a very random read. I suspect I found it looking at the list of recent additions to my library's Libby. The final book for this quarter that I rated four stars was Facing the Lion, Growing Up Maasai on the African Savannah by Joseph Lamasolai Lakutin. A very concise nonfiction book. I picked this up as it related to my goal reading for 2021, and it did not disappoint. An interesting compare and contrast to many of my other goal reads this year. And then we have the five out of five stars. I kicked this quarter off with a very interesting and rewarding lesson from The Great Courses, or whatever they are called now. 
Introduction to the Quran by Martin Oliver. I am trying to avoid reading books about Islam from the perspective of non-Muslims, which this appears to be, but this course generally had pretty high ratings on the website from people who seemed to know what they were talking about. Any recommendations for non-fiction titles by Muslims about Islam would be appreciated. Hopefully I'll have some titles to report back on in future quarters. Next up, we have Split Tooth by Inuk Throat Singer and creator Tanya Tigak one of those books that has been on my TBR since publication. Then I read The Cross and the Lynching Tree by James H. Cones because I think that Christian liberation theology is extremely important and Cones is a heavy hitter in the so-called American context, a vital contrast for my Christian peers raised in white churches. I also picked up two novellas by Niveau, namely The Empress of Salt and Fortune and When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain. I don't remember specifically, but I suspect this was a matter of popularity amongst booktubers I follow. I obviously enjoyed these books a lot and found them extremely interesting. Burning in This Midnight Dream by Louise B. Half was perhaps the book I am most proud of getting to this quarter. This is because it was a physical book of poetry. Two things I'm always saying I want to pick up more of. Recommended by the Story Keepers podcast, I certainly do not feel up to reviewing poetry, so I will simply say I highly recommend it. Next, I read A History of My Brief Body by Billy Ray Belcourt, a meditation on grief, joy, love, and sex at the intersection of indigeneity and queerness. Highly recommend. And among so many excellent five-star reads this quarter, I feel like Under the Udala Trees by Janello Paranta is probably my favorite. Obviously a goal read, I was immediately sucked into this many-layered queer historical literary novel set in Nigeria that weaves together Ijoma's coming of age and Nigeria's independence. One of those very few novels that I feel a very strong compulsion to purchase. We shall see. The final five-star read I have to talk about today is Our History is the Future, Standing Rock versus the Dakota Axis Pipeline, and The Long Tradition of Indigenous Resistance by Nick Esses. I feel like The title is pretty self-explanatory. I would highly, highly recommend. And that's all the books I read in the final quarter of 2021. It's been a great journey overall, can't complain, and it's also been nice to have this time and uh, space to reflect on them. The podcast for this quarter that has helped me not read more books goes to Works in Theory podcast, a podcast about utopia leftist theory link in the description if that sounds interesting. Now, as previously mentioned, I want to take a bit of time to reflect on my goals for this past year. I have already posted my goals for 2022, so I will link to that video in the cards. I will also be doing timestamps, so if you want to jump straight to the stats part of this video, you should be able to do so easily. In overall rating goals, aka the Goodreads book goal, I set it at 71, as I have been one to do for many years, and I surpassed that by 214 books. More surprisingly, I read about 100 more books in 2021 than I did in 2020. I had thought I was going all out with my reading in 2020 already, but I did end up commuting by bike a lot that summer. Apparently, my average pages per book only dropped about 60 pages, which I suspect could add up, but it still seems kind of smaller than I would have expected. My next goal was to read 30 books without pictures, but including audiobooks from authors who are connected to the continent of Africa. This is a kind of goal I've been setting for several years now to help introduce myself to different kinds of authors. Of the five or six years I have been setting something like this goal, I believe this is only my second year achieving it, and I managed to read 31. So really, I surpassed it. But obviously, it's still only the beginning. While I've moved on to a new geographic region, I look forward to picking up more authors from across the continent of Africa. Looking at countries in Africa that I read books from, I hit the short-lived country of Biafra, Cameroon, Democratic Republic of Congo, Egypt, Kenya, Liberia, Morocco, Nigeria, Rwanda, Sierra Leone, South Africa, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. I also read books by people who are Igbo, Maasai, and Mende. Obviously, this is still just a small fraction of the diverse countries and people groups that populate this continent, heavily skewed towards countries that have English-speaking populations thanks to brutal colonization, 
Not to mention that so much of my reading is heavily dependent on what is available to me in audio format. As I've already covered in my goals video, this is something that I am working on, and the current plan is that once I've covered each geographic region in my yearly goals scheme, to circle back and do something similar focused exclusively on countries I have not yet read from. Another goal I mentioned in my 2021 reading goals video was to make quarterly update videos. That year saw a dramatic increase in the amount of reading that I did, and it was proving too good difficult to just have a mid-year and end of year wrap up, I succeeded at this goal. It was a positive development and I hope to continue it into this next year. Although it would be great if I could work on these scripts a little bit at a time as I finish books, instead of just leaving them all until the last minute. To take a brief tangent in the graphic novel and comics direction, I also set a goal to continue to create my black comics TBRs and A to Z of queer lit videos. Which I did. I also ended up starting an anti-ableism TBR and once yearly indigenous and leftist comics wrap-ups. I've also switched from just scheduling an infinite list of reviews into the future as things come up and instead take them on a month at a time. Between these two things, I am much more cool and collected about the balance of comics that I read and review. Up until this year, I would often feel like I was reading too much of one kind of comic to the detriment of others, or feel like I wasn't reading enough serious content. I certainly hope this continues into the new year. Another change I made going into 2021 was that I started posting three videos a week instead of two. Of course, I originally thought maybe I would go up to four, but even then I suspected this would not happen. <laughs> Three videos has been a tough hurdle for me to cross, although I generally do. I haven't had as much of a buffer as I used to, but if I stopped, I would feel like I wasn't getting to say all the things I want to say in the timely fashion either. So I keep playing around with what days I try and publish on and what kinds of videos I go with to try and find a good balance where I can thrive. It wasn't one of my goals for 2021, but I have now decided to take off the month of September going forward. It's my book two birthday, and I'm always busy during that time of year, even though I'm not in school. Although I do try and latch on to the new year, new you energy that it tends to bring out in people who are still tied to school calendars. And now for the home stretch, stats. And because I like to create a lot of extra work for myself, I'm going to be showing three graphs for each section of my stats comparing percentages for this past quarter, this year overall, and last year. For better or for worse, this meant that since the way that I track stats is still a bit in flux, I had to go back and update last year's chart to match the latest version of this year's chart. Obviously, this needed to happen at some point, but geez, this video is taking forever to put together. <laughs> Lol. Asterix. These stats are not static. Sometimes I learn new things about people. Sometimes I correct mistakes. Sometimes more than one category applies. One of the interesting things that helped me collect stats more consistently was thinking about it as a relationship with the author. Starting out with the basics, I read 20 books this quarter. This is lower than in previous quarters, but that is very unsurprising considering how busy the fall always seems to be. I've also been trying to get down my podcast backlog, and I had enough of a head start on my main goal to still finish it in plenty of time. Overall, this year I read 102 not comic books compared to last year when I read 72 not comic books. If we look at what percentage this makes up of my total reading in a year, both years end up at 35 to 36% which does strike me as rather interesting. This quarter, my books averaged 229 pages long, the average publication year was 2016, and the average star rating was 4.35 stars. Over the entirety of 2021, the page average was 270 pages, publication year was 2010, and average rating was four stars. In 2020, I hit an average of 280 pages per book, 2003 was the average publication date, and the average rating was 3.69 stars. So the general trend seems to be shorter, more recent, and more enjoyable. This does seem to make sense with what I value as it compares to trends in publication, although I wouldn't mind reading a few more older books again. Looking at series versus standalone, I read four books in series this quarter and 16 standalone. In this year overall, it was 28 and 67, compared to last year, which was 10 and 62. So despite reading so few this quarter, overall the proportion of books and series that I am reading is going up. Genre-wise, this quarter I read 9 nonfiction, 4 contemporary, 3 SFF, 
two historical fiction and an all-time high of two poetry. This equals in 2021 that I read 41 nonfiction, 21 contemporary, 31 SFF, five historical fiction, and those two poetry books again. Percentage-wise, that meant I read more contemporary and less SFF this year compared to last year. A bit of a side note, since it isn't a stat, I can track for most of my reading, but this quarter I read four books by people who identify on the anarcho-Marxist side of things. Over the entire year, this grows to five, compared to last year when I read seven. Not headed in the right direction on, with that one. Somewhat similarly, I started tracking people who describe themselves as being part of the mental health, disability, deaf, neurodivergent, and or chronically ill communities. Most people either aren't part of these communities or don't feel comfortable publicly identifying with them. That said, this year I read a total of three books by people who identify with these sometimes separate, sometimes overlapping communities. This year, that total was 17, and I haven't gone back and retroactively tracked what this stat was last year. So there we go. Looking at my stats around author race, this quarter I read five books by black writers, three books by white writers, five books by indigenous writers, five books by people of color, and one book by a person where race is yet unknown. This year overall, I read 42 black, 29 white, 23 indigenous, 17 POC, and that one unknown author. Comparing this to last year, there's been a lot of fluctuation. I definitely had more nostalgic reads this year, which I think is the main driver to the tick up in percentage of white authors. Asterix this year, I did read a number of black indigenous authors, so there is some overlap there. The one stat that most people don't track, which is fair, is religious influence. As a Christian though, in recent years, I've started wanting to track this because it is an area I want to diversify my reading in especially since I finished my final Christian course this spring. Not everyone I marked down for these religions is necessarily currently practicing though. I went with self-ID and saying stuff like, I grew up Muslim or Christian, etc. Not to say people are something they aren't, but what kinds of religion might have the most impact on their worldview, either positively or negatively, if that makes sense. This quarter I managed to keep things pretty even, with two books by authors on the Jewish spectrum, two by authors on the Christian spectrum, and two authors on the Muslim spectrum. Overall, this year I read four books by an author who practices Odinon, one by someone in the Buddhist spectrum, two on the Jewish spectrum, a whopping 17 on the Christian spectrum, six on the Muslim spectrum, two who identified as non, and two who identified as atheist. Comparing this to last year, I am glad to see the Christian percentage going down and that overall diversity is becoming more of a thing this year, although there is obviously room to grow. Looking at gender, this quarter I read 12 books by women, six books by men, and one book by someone beyond the gender binary. Besides that, I read two books by people who also identified as trans. Overall this year, I read 61 books by women, 32 books by men, and 8 books by people beyond the binary, 12 of which also identified as trans. Not much difference in percentage there, but last year I read no books by binary trans people, so that's an improvement. Sexuality-wise, I break things down into two very wide umbrellas. This quarter, I read five books by people who publicly fall within the alphabet mafia, as it were, and 13 are unknown. This year overall turned into 21 versus 51. Apparently comparing this to last year, the percentages are about the same. And finally, we get to what generally turns into the most unwieldy statistic, that is which countries and people groups authors are from, live in, and or are citizens of. This quarter I read 13 books by people associated with so-called America, four people associated with so-called Canada, two Cree authors, and two authors associated with Nigeria. After that, I read a single book each from an Inuk, Ojibwe, Sioux, Australian, Cameroon, Ig Igbo, Kenyan, Maasai, and South African associated authors. Not included in the chart because I ran out of room. In the year overall, I read 60 books by people associated with the USA, read multiple titles from 13 different countries and people groups, and just one title from 27 different countries and people groups. And last year, I read 44 books by authors associated with so-called America, and overall read multiple titles from 11 countries and single titles from 13 countries. Obviously, it would be nice to see that American number go down, but a lot of people move here and then publish books that are then turned into audiobooks. So feel kind of stuck and hopefully 
my other country numbers will continue to climb, regardless. And that's all I wrote. Thank you for sticking in there. Bye y'all, keep reading an organized and capitalist depression. And as always, Literally Graphic is recorded on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation. I live here because of British colonization, indigenous genocide, and more geographically specific, Treaty 13 also known as the Toronto Purchase, which was finalized in 1805 between representatives of the Crown and certain Mississauga peoples. This treaty was a lie and has since been broken many times over. Saying so reflects only my own small steps towards knowing the truth and does nothing for reconciliation.